Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so um, I hope everyone is well. And um, yeah, um, and um, yeah, so uh, pray to Christ. You'll be fine. Um, he is the king, the light, the way, and the truth. Um, and nothing gets past him. Um, so just follow Christ. Don't be like the fools who think they're in control. Um, okay. <laughs> Um, anyway, anyway, that very pious sentiment out the way, uh, what I have here for you is super exciting and it's change of variables and the Jacobian. I must qualify though saying that this video is um, like my example zeros, which is we're looking at the big picture on change of variables and the Jacobian, uh, but I will have, not but, therefore, I will have in future videos examples dedicated to this subject. So I will have like actual examples that we're going to work through. Um, and um, the larger motivation for making this video actually is a while back, I shared a geometric perspective on how when we're doing double integrals uh, and we switch to polar coordinates, dx dy, which can be also dy dx, turns into r d r d theta. So I already have a video explaining why dx dy, which is dA, um, turns into r d r d theta on polar coordinates. Well, polar coordinates are a change of variable. So not only are we going to talk about change of variables, big picture uh, in this video and the Jacobian, but we're also going to be able to explain in a second way why when we switch to polar coordinates, dA on a double integral turns to r d r d theta. So you can read, it says, suppose that we want to integrate some function of two variables x, y over region r. Under the transformation, x equals g of u, v, and y equals h of u, v, uh, the region r is going to turn into s, and the integral becomes the following, right? Uh, well, first, the integral over r, right? And this integral over r, once we switch to um, u and v from x and y, right, like through g and um, H, we switch to U and V, right? This here over R is going to turn into this. So if you're doing double integrals and you need to work on change of variables, this is everything you need right here. This equation is everything you need. Of course, there's a curious little thing here and it's an absolute value. Um, this here is absolute value. And this curious little guy is the Jacobian. All right. Now the Jacobian is defined as the determinant of this two by two matrix. Uh, so the partial with respect to um, u of x and the partial with respect to v of x, whatever the variables u and v may be, and then the partial with respect to u of y, okay, you can read. And also, I have many videos in linear algebra explaining two by two determinants, but uh, if you don't already know, what we do is we multiply this and this, and then we subtract uh, the product of these two. What I'm saying is uh, the determinant here can be written like this, right? So writing it as a determinant is just a way to get to this here, which is what you will do in practice, right? Calculate this. Okay, 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 cool. So as I said, switching to polar coordinates, my coordinates, I thought that was a bit cheesy. So I, it was one of the slides that said my coordinates. It's not. So I took it out. Um, okay, but as I said, uh, this little fella is called the Jacobian, and uh, when we change the polar coordinates, uh, the variables we're going to change into are r and theta, not u and v, right? We're going to switch to r and theta. Specifically, x is going to become r cosine theta, and y is going to become r sine theta. But notice, in becoming r cosine theta, x is a function of two variables, r and theta, and likewise with y, right? So the r is like the u and the theta is like the v if you really need that much hand-holding. Um, okay, um, so then what we're going to have is that uh, the Jacobian, well, will first require that we calculate these partials, partial with respect to r of x, partial with respect to r of y, and you get it, you get it. And I have videos dedicated to partial derivatives, so this is not the place to talk about how I got these things. If you need help, watch the videos on partial derivatives. Uh, but this is pretty straightforward. And of course, once we've got all four components of the uh, Jacobian, we just uh, replace them in here and do some careful algebra, right? 
And so what we're saying is the Jacobian, this here, is going to turn into, for the polar coordinate switch, it's going to turn into this. Now, this double negative is really handy, right? Because this is what we're going to have. Also notice there's an R there, there's an R there that we have retained. Otherwise, this part is cosine squared, and this part is sine squared, and the double negatives have us write a plus, right? Clearly, we can factor out an R from this. And when we do factor out an R, what we're going to get is, well, first the factoring of the R, and then otherwise the result, right? We're just going to get simply R. Now, important, important, important. Look at how the Jacobian is defined. The Jacobian doesn't have absolute values around it, but it may be a negative quantity. So in the double integral, when you substitute, you need to put absolute values around uh, the Jacobian. Now, here, since the Jacobian is simply R, the absolute value of R is just R. So then, if we make some space and finish, what we're saying is uh, that this double integral over uh, the region R is going to turn into a double integral over some other region S. All we're saying in writing R and S is that the region R is going to be transformed. Uh, yeah, because you're changing the variables to a different set, right? Um, but yeah, otherwise, as I said, the Jacobian turns into the absolute value of R, which is simply R. Other, uh, other than that, the rest of dA and the change of variables is going to be dr d theta. And of course, dA and uh, the rectangular coordinates was dx dy or dy dx, whichever is more convenient to integrate first, right? Um, the way it's written right now, uh, just a quick note, is that we have to integrate with respect to x first and then y, but sometimes it may be convenient uh, to integrate with y first and then x. So feel free to write uh, dA as um, dy dx. And similarly, in this part, you could write d theta in front of dr, but they're in a product. But crucially, in front of them is this little r. And so our um, question was, why does this r come about? Well, as I said in a previous video, I gave you a geometric perspective on why this r has to be there. And here, there's an algebraic um, uh, reason, and that's the Jacobian, right? Okay, cool. I hope you enjoyed this. Lots more to come. Um, yeah, keep watching. Take care.